Hey everyone, how's it going? Today we're going to be talking about an aircraft that was doomed to fail, in that it would never even have the chance to make it into full-fledged production no matter what it did. Some may call that a pointless endeavor, others would call that an experimental test bed. Yes, today we're talking about an experimental plane meant to provide research data for future planes that would be put into production. The subject for today is a little bit more interesting, to me anyway, than your typical testbed aircraft, because it was basically born out of an argument. Two entities disagreed on an aircraft design, and to settle their disagreement, a plane was made that could test both of their design ideas to see which one worked best. This is the Adjustable Wing Adjustable Tail Short SB-5. The story on the SB-5 begins with the initial design work of the English Electric Lightning, as the SB-5 was made as a direct result of that project. The Lightning began around 1947 as a result of the cancellation of the Miles M-52, a jet aircraft intended to bring British aircraft into supersonic territory, but was inevitably cancelled in 1946. Still, Teddy Petter of English Electric would push the British government to continue work on supersonic aircraft, and in conjunction with two other designers, Frederick Page and Ray Creasy, they began initial design work on a jet aircraft capable of exceeding not just Mach 1, but Mach 1.5. By November 1948, they would submit an approved design proposal that, among other features, called for wings swept at 40 degrees, done so to keep the wings clear of the so-called Mach cone and improve speed performance. In 1949, this design, now known as the P-1, would evolve in an attempt to achieve speeds upwards of Mach 2. To achieve this, and once again keep the wings out of the Mach cone, the wings would be further swept back to 60 degrees. Such a severe wing sweep did not exist and had not been tested up to this point. Having a swept wing was slash is pretty important, but not vital, to better aircraft performance at high speeds, but swept wings can also have some substantial issues at low speeds surrounding stall issues and lift generation. The more severe the sweep, the more these issues may present themselves. So, when English Electric presented a design with a 60-degree wing sweep with low-set horizontal stabilizers in the tail, that was also a sticking point, the British government was pretty skeptical. The Royal Aircraft Establishment, part of the British War Office, believed that such a severe sweep with that tail configuration was simply too dangerous to fly at low speeds. However, English Electric stood by its design and believed that their data showed that this configuration was the most optimal. Neither side would back down here, and to settle this dispute, the Air Ministry would issue specification ER-100, calling for an aircraft design that could test low-speed flight characteristics of various wing and tail configurations. To this specification, the Short Brothers would answer the call, and a contract was awarded to their SB-5 design in August 1950. As it was to serve as a test craft for the P-1, the SB-5 looked remarkably similar to it. In essence, it was just a slightly smaller version of the P-1. Made rather simply with an aluminum alloy fuselage and plywood wings, the SB-5 was designed with the full intent of it being a low-speed aircraft. In fact, despite having a Rolls-Royce Derwent Mark 8 jet engine and a relatively light gross weight of 12,000 pounds, the top speed of the SB-5 was on par with mid-World War II prop planes at just 311 miles an hour. The engine was actually pretty underpowered as far as jet engines go, but for all intents and purposes, it's all they really needed. Additionally, the wooden wings were a built-in limiter that would prevent it from going above 400 miles an hour, as at that speed, the wooden wings would likely be destroyed through the sheer force alone. 
Further adding to the idea that the plane would be low speed and nothing more was the fact that the landing gear was fixed and could not be retracted into the wings or fuselage. This was something very unusual as far as jet aircraft are concerned. But even more unusual was the fact that there were three different wing configurations and two different tail configurations that could be swapped out as needed. While later aircraft had wings that could hinge out or in at the pilot's will, so-called swing wings, they didn't have that back then. So, to test the most optimal wing angle for low-speed control for a high-speed Mach 2 aircraft, three different wings with increasingly intense sweeps were made. To be a little more specific though, they actually made two wings for this test and a third extra wing just for the inherent research value. It started out at a more modest 50 degree sweep, then bumped up to a 60 degree sweep, the angle English Electric wanted, and then all the way up to a 69 degree sweep. Why they didn't just go to 70 degrees, I'm not sure, but maybe they just wanted the sweep to be nice. For the two tail configurations, they wanted to test whether a more standard looking low set tail or a so-called T-tail with the horizontal stabilizers at the very top of the vertical fin was the most optimal configuration. To achieve this, two completely separate tail sections were made and could be swapped out as needed. It would detach just behind the engine, which was located towards the center of the fuselage and just in front of where the vertical fin began. Flight testing on the SB-5 began on December 2nd, 1952, and its initial configuration was the 50-degree wing sweep and the T-tail. Then, in July 1953, the 50-degree wings were swapped out with the 60-degree wings and the tail remained the same. At an air display in September 1953 at Farnborough, the SB-5 was flown and apparently put on quite the display, with the pilot, Tom Brooks Smith, showing off the SB-5's excellent maneuverability and low-speed handling with the 60-degree wing. In January 1954, the T-tail was swapped out with the more conventional-looking low-tail. This had to be done now, as the first P-1 prototype was supposed to be flying soon with this exact configuration, so they needed to provide sufficient testing data before it took flight. After the P-1 eventually took flight in August 1954, the SB-5 continued testing on the 60-degree wing sweep and two tail variants for about four or so years until April 1958. During this testing cycle, it was eventually determined around 1956 that the T-tail design was overall inferior and English Electric was indeed correct to go with the more standard-looking low-tail design. There was also a conclusion made on the most optimal wing sweep for the P-1, but before that, testing on the 69-degree wing sweep still had to be conducted. But before that testing could be conducted, a few upgrades were made to the SB-5. A Martin Baker ejection seat was fitted to it and the engine was upgraded to a much stronger Bristol Orpheus engine. This version of the SB-5 would finally fly on October 18, 1960, and with that 69 degree wing sweep, it was the plane with the most severe wing sweep in the world. Testing on this variant would continue until sometime around 1965 or 1967, where it would then be relocated to the Empire Test Pilot School to give those students some much-needed experience with high-wing sweep slender aircraft. A few years later, the SB-5 would be handed over to the Royal Air Force Museum where both it and its alternate tail configuration reside to this day. But back to the tests on the various wing sweep angles, eventually after this testing it was concluded that English Electric was once again right and the 60 degree sweep was indeed the most optimal configuration for both the SB-5 and the P-1. In fact, once testing on the 60 degree sweep ended back in 1958, the RAE and English Electric had the information they needed, and testing on the 69-degree sweep wasn't really needed. 
It was still conducted though, just because they already had the test bed available to them and wanted to test something a bit more extreme just for the research value. This was the original plan back when the project first started. Once the testing settled the debate between the RAE and English Electric, this ostensibly sealed the production run of the P-1. Now, to be clear, the P-1 was selected for production by the British government back in 1957, in large part because they desperately needed a new interceptor that could stand up to potential Soviet threats, but in October 1958, the P-1 was officially given the name Lightning, and this was celebrated by smashing a bottle of champagne on the plane's body. Mazel tov. Shortly thereafter, in November, just one month later, the Lightning would be the first British plane, and second plane worldwide, to achieve Mach 2 in flight. Two years later, in July 1960, the Lightning would be officially introduced into RAF service, where it would enjoy a 28-year career, with a reputation of being a fast, very well-handling aircraft. In fact, the handling of the Lightning was appreciated not only by British pilots, but by American pilots as well. Two American pilots would fly the prototype P-1 back in 1958, and one of them, a man named Deke Slayton, commented that the P-1 had the easy handling of the F-86 and the performance of the F-104, with the plane's only real drawback being the short range it had but it was primarily an interceptor, so this was fine. Slayton would even call the P-1 his favorite plane of all time. As for the SB-5, in some sense, the very existence of this plane was kind of pointless. English Electric was indeed correct about how the Lightning should be designed, and the British government disagreed mainly on the basis that such a severe wing sweep had not been tested before and was thus inherently too dangerous. Personally though, I think it made sense to create the SB-5 and get full-scale testing done on more severe and extreme wing sweep configurations. While English Electric did have their own data to back up their design decision, it wasn't really field tested yet, and it would be a bit foolish to proceed full speed ahead with production without more evidence. Plus, they ended up using the SB-5 for additional wing sweep testing and as a trainer plane, so it still had a decent amount of use, outside of the whole debate between the RAE and English Electric. Regardless, though, of whether or not you believe the SB-5 was, in the end, pointless to make, its story and overall design was still pretty interesting. And on that note, I think we'll go ahead and end for today. So, thank you all for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Looking at the SB-5 with the T-tail design, it sort of looks like a section of the wings was just cut out and stuck on top of the tail section. It looks like that T-tail could just slide right in and create a delta wing. This is irrelevant to the overall design, I know, but it's all I can see when I see that tail design. It just looks very strange. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you learned something. So, see ya.